Hi guys, here's a real quick video on touch desensitization. This one is cradling. And cradling is one of those techniques that is also important to teach a dog. It builds trust, establishes a bond, it allows you access to the undercarriage of a dog. So it's a little bit like cradling a child. You cradle the dog, the dog's turned upside down. You have a perfect view of the underneath or the undercarriage of your dog. And this makes examining so much easier. It teaches the dog to be exceptionally calm because the dog is vulnerable in this state and so makes your life and the life of a medical professional so much easier. It also helps keep your dog calm in extreme circumstances. And if your dog's sick or has trauma, this can be a lifesaver for your dog. So it's really important to do and it's well worth the time. Hope you enjoy it. We'll see you in there. Okay, so I prefer to do this on the ground to start with. Once you know your dog, you can do it in a chair, but I simply don't allow untrained dogs up on furniture. Um, you just run too many risks of things going wrong. So I like them down off furniture, so I like to do this on the ground. And I'm nice and close to the ground, and so if, if Mia freaks out, uh -uh. if Mia freaks out, then, um, you know, she's not going to fall any distance or anything like that. Now the wonderful thing about cradling is it's a terrific exercise for, for helping to build a bond and, and, and to establish trust with your dog. And it's fantastic for that. And it's a fantastic way of helping and, you know, to teach your dog to be calm, as well as all the benefits that you're going to teach your dog to be handled in all different positions, in all different areas. And in this one, the dog's very vulnerable. They're on their back, so it's vulnerable. So one of the things I like to make sure I do a lot of is just stroke the chest and the stomach, just really gently. So I'll just move around a little bit. So I just like to just do this, a very gentle movement, very soft. Stroking the chest of a dog helps to calm them. And it's a very gentle motion. So you want to really soothe the dog. Now cradling, like I said, not only helps, you know, build a bond and establish trust, it allows the dog, allows you to have the dog in a position where you have total access to the undercarriage of a dog. So you can get up into all the crevices and all the joints you can be looking for ticks or sores. You're able to examine, very easily examine the feet. You can get very easily into the actual toes themselves. Good girl. And you can see I'm not just touching them, I'm able to get up into the, right up into the crevices in case there's anything there. And I've got a really good visual on it too. And once you train the dog, they become very relaxed. She's 10 weeks old and you can see she's very chilled. Occasionally she gets a little uptight. In which case I just spend time training her. Now, I was asked what do I do if the dog struggles and all I'm going to do is if she starts to struggle is I'm going to make sure she's secured. I'm not going to grip her tight, I'm not going to hurt her, but I will make sure she can't fall. And I will correct her with a correction sound. So I'll, I'll give her a correction sound and let her know that, hey, that's, that's not okay. I need you to be calm and I'll help calm her. And it's really important because I need her to be calm so she can be examined. I need her to be calm so she doesn't hurt herself. Now, if she's obviously getting too stressed, then I'll wait until she's calm and then she'll go down and we'll end the session. Yes, is that good? Is a good girl. I also like to just stroke the side of the face really slowly, really gently. She's teething at the moment and I know her gums are really sore and she hasn't been able to eat kibble without us just softening it. But as you can see, she's exceptionally good. She's not trying to bite. If she does, she'll get corrected. But we've put a lot of work in from day one to teach this dog no skin on teeth, so she's already exceptionally good. 
But again, she'll be corrected for that. But as you can see, I'm continually just stroking her on the chest. Mia, good girl. She's getting a little bit stressed now. And it's really hot in this room. This, this is the one room in the house that doesn't have air conditioning, so it gets really hot. Good girl. And you can see, I'll just gently touch her ears and her face. And this is really important important for body inhibition training um, is to be able to again and for touch desensitization be able to move around her face without her lunging and biting and so it takes training constant so I try to make sure everything I do with a puppy is all about teaching body inhibition teeth don't belong on skin gentle and so I just never have an issue with mouthing and that doesn't mean she won't mouth she will and she does but it's got, you know, it's very gentle when she does. It's normally when she's not thinking. It's uh, very easy to correct. Good girl. And as you can see, I can stroke her face and no issue. So this is really good. You can check all the joints, everything like that, all the undercarriage. And it's terrific. You can see she's getting calm. She's a little little whiny. She wants to get down, but she's still staying calm. Now, if you've got a dog that is really terrible at this, I'll show you another way of doing that. But once you can get your dog up like this, this is how you do it. Keep the sessions short. They don't need to be as long as what this is because I could have done all this a lot quicker. So keep them short. Don't let the dog get too worked up or too stressed. We'll see you in the next part. Hi, so this is a second way of doing it. If your dog is really stressed or gets really squirmy, is you can sit them like this. And everything's the same. Nice gentle stroking along the chest and the belly. Really calm. Now, whenever you're doing cradling, the best time, you're right. The best time to do this is after your dog's eaten, when your dog's tired, you know, just before bed, anything like that. When the dog's calm, don't try and do it when the dog's not calm. It's a bit like trying to do calm training when your dog's really worked up. It sort of defeats the purpose. You, you cheat, you use little cheat sheets. You want to teach calm, teach calm calm when the dog is relatively calm. Keep calm when the dog's getting towards being sleepy or after a full meal. They're the times to teach anything that um, you require calm because the dog's naturally calming down anyway so they don't tend to get worked up as much. You don't want to be trying to teach calm initially when a dog is overstimulated because you're going to fail. So I, I Ah, uh, good. And so there's a correction. If she's squirmy, I'll just let her know, hey, that's not okay. Just chill. Good. Good girl. Yes. And all the movements I did when I had her cradled across me are the same here. And then over time, you'll find that it's all right. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Over time, you'll find you'll be able to just naturally let her down. So she'll even do this while we're just doing this. Once she relaxes, good. And we just relax and I rub her. You'll see the legs gone down now. Good girl. And she's becoming very relaxed again. Good. a good girl and this is how over time the dog will just naturally get lower and lower and lower and become more relaxed as you do it and then you can cradle as the dog gets bigger obviously you do this like this or you know the dog will roll over for you again you're not forcing the dog onto its back at all and it's all very gentle all very relaxed
So everything about it up is as calming as possible. Good. And you can just see Mia's getting towards the end of it. You know, she's a bit over it. Like I said, this is much longer than we normally would do. And I don't do it this way with her at all. So I just do it across my body, cradled in my arms. So this is the first time she's been this way. Good girl. And this is cradling and it's, you know, a terrific exercise and it's part of the Touch Desensitise series that I'm putting together and it's really, really important that you touch puppies all over, that they get used to being touched, they get used to being examined and that it's all very calm, all very relaxing. And that way you get a dog that's able to be checked by vets without a lot of issues or checked by you without a lot of issues. It begins to build a really good bond and trust with you when you need to handle them. And so it saves a lot of issues from, with that. And like I said, it's used to teach things, you know, like bite inhibition and gentle and all of that as well. As you can see, she's teething. I can handle her, nice slow movement, she's not trying to bite and that's what you want in a puppy. So these types of exercises are essential to achieve that. Hope that helps, we'll see you in the next one.